Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes. In this flight I'm going to fly from Paris to Lyon in a Mirage 3C. And there's a freeware Mirage, a very good one. And I've chosen the Black Widow livery, uh, though there are a lot of liveries. In fact, a lot of variants of the Mirage 3 that come with this pack. And uh, this was by Norin on the xplane.org forum. And yeah, highly detailed. There have been, uh, there was a f one issue with the previous one that I had flown, which was a 3.0, with its pressurization. And I'm just trying to take a look here to see, okay, the pressurization is here. And I'm trying to flick it and I can't. So if it turns out that I start blacking out from lack of oxygen, I'm gonna have to fly this at a relatively low altitude. <laughs> so just telling you that in, a, that in advance. Also, there have been braking problems with this and uh, just stopping on a runway. And I am aware of this. Uh, that uh, ground handling uh, has been an issue that uh, the creator of this particular plane has been trying to fix. So um, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I am aware of the stall speed of the plane. It's a Delta, so it has a pretty high stall speed and it does not have flaps. Uh, let me try and lower flaps just to verify. Nope, nothing is happening. So yes, no flaps. So we'll see. We'll see whether I can stop on the Leon, uh, Leon runway. But aside from that, uh, I will continue with the Apollo 12 audio. They are in orbit around the moon and uh, getting set to, uh, well, sorting out the lunar module. They'll be going to sleep soon as well. Well, let's just listen to it. And let's get started. Breaks off. You can see I'm pulling up here, but it's not getting off the ground yet at 200 knots. Now it's getting okay, off. Okay, we'll terminate battery B. Why don't we go ahead and uh, cycle the fans for you now? We were just we were going to wait till just before we were going to go to sleep, but we'll cycle them now for you. Roger, so that was you. dodgy. But also, Dick, the uh, boys in the back room are uh, very well pleased with the uh, P-22 But we'll see. Uh, we will see. They, uh, we're impressed with the uh, technique and the spacing. Also, the uh, your solution agrees to within a hundredth of a degree of the uh, map position. So uh, everybody's very pleased with that. A hundredth of a degree, huh? I'm carrying a Maverick missile and two Sidewinders for some reason. I probably should have dumped those. Uh, Pete, when you uh, go in the uh, LEM tomorrow, the Ag people would like you to check a series of uh, locations in the e-memory uh, just to check out uh, that system. Uh, I've got a list of the locations and the expected parameters that we'd like to read you sometime before uh, bedtime this evening. Uh, they'll rest better if you have them tonight. So I fixed my clouds by disabling X-Vision. Okay, uh, this is due to what happened on launch. Is that what you're saying? You want to verify some memory? That is affirmative. I've got the list whenever you want to copy. It's uh, about a page of uh, locations, about 25 or so. So these are the stock clouds now. And they don't look too bad. Okay, I mean, Al's got his handful of food bags right all. now. Uh, just a second and I'll copy them for him. Wait one. Roger. So, yeah. Uh, I'll have to wait until there's an update to X Vision, and I'll have to review uh, like the, to the, the preset that, that I was uh, using. While you were running around behind the moon there this time, we uh, replayed your uh, last TV coverage uh, to the boys down in the hangar deck. It was very nice. Very good. It looks a lot better on the big screen than it does on my home television set. Well, tell you what, it looks a lot better from right here with the old eyeball, but uh, we're doing as best we can for you. 
I bet it I, uh, I wish we could bring some TV from the back side of the moon. I really, uh, I'm sort of more impressed with the back side of the moon as being prettier than I am with the front side. You're making us feel envious. <laughs> I'm not sure that that meets with complete agreement in the, in the spacecraft. Interesting inlet. I guess everyone has his favorite spot someplace. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'm ready. Okay, I need to check whether I'm going to be blacking out here. Roger. Uh, location 454. The value is plus 00700. Zero, seven, zero, zero. Location 466 plus 00150. Zero, zero. Location 506 plus 02. Four zero zero. Fiver two three is plus all zeros. Fiver two seven plus zero zero five zero zero. Location five three seven plus zero 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 two. Okay, we're Location at twenty one thousand feet. Plus all zeros. Location five six one plus zero two four three six. Seems okay. Maybe plus, uh, the problem has been fixed. I just six, updated this four, particular plane. Minus That's four, why I knew I was six, in the update logs three, uh, as far as the stopping four. and braking was concerned. Location Maybe the modder just skipped the pressurization thing. We'll see. Location five six six. Until it's actually implemented as a switch, of course. One five three one six zero one minus seven five three four one. Location six zero two plus all zeros. Okay, let's kick it into gear. Six, two, two, Technically, you're not supposed to break the one, speed of sound over zero, land, but... Zero, zero, six, two. You know. Okay, six, <laughs> we've got we've three, got a supersonic four, fighter. Let's try it. Zero, zero, one, zero, and zero. I'll go up to a better altitude six, as well. Five, four, minus six, two, six, five, five. Location six five five plus zero three four six seven. Looking nice. Six. No, oh, it's getting a little bit wobbly. Plus zero zero zero. Now we probably one, shouldn't turn. Five. Location six six one plus zero 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 three one. They actually fit Location rocket boosters six, on Mirage 3s. Two, plus Just small ones that five, get it above three, Mach 2 six, potentially. Uh, zero, three. Six, 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 plus zero, Otherwise I think four, it peaks out of Mach 1.4. One oh, zero. I'm I'm blacking out here. Location six. We're at thirty six thousand feet. I'm gonna try one, Alt O. Two, Alt zero, O. I believe was five, pressurization. Three. That's the end of the list. Let's see. Currently assign flight controls pressurization. Well, okay, I can change uh, the cabin I'll altitude as well. But sure. crew oxygen master valve toggle is Alt O. I'll try Alt Control P as well. Okay, I think I'm I'm doing better. Maybe that worked. We are past the speed of sound now. I would like to stop going down though. 
I would also like to stop shaking. Mark 1.2. Definitely shimmying. Point three. There's a Mach gauge over here. You can see it's pointed at Mach 1.3 and then there's this huge amount on the Mach gauge between 1.3 and 1.4 because that's basically where it tops out. And then there's basically the rocket boost area between 1.4 and Mach 2. It seems to be getting on. darker here. The, uh, was that last uh, night, yeah, well, I guess I can't go this high. Uh, I'm gonna start pitching down. I'll take it out of because uh, as I go down, I don't want to go too fast. Take it out of afterburner. Yeah, thirty-eight thousand feet, not good. Thirty thousand feet seemed all right. It was a weird, weird story just there. I, I'm going to replay that. Okay, I'm going to replay that. Okay, so this is because they're consuming 10% extra O2. Metabolic rates indicated that one of you was dreaming probably about scuba diving and that we think you were dreaming about heading a moray eel and in the hyperventilation you sucked up too much of the oxygen. Now that is a weird story. And I've got to figure that there is some okay, sort of reference involved David, in that. Did I go along with that one? Roger. Like it's referring to somebody having done something like that. Or being an avid diver or something. I don't know. There's something going on in that little story. I suspect that uh, it's this uh, urine device thing. Uh, which Still is, dark uh, in the cockpit. Uh, I, I think I'm going to have to go to, lower. Uh, keep it flushed out. It doesn't flush out very well. So we've been leaving it on and we usually don't bother to shut it down until the O2 high flow comes on or something. And that takes a while. But uh, that probably yeah. doesn't account for all of it. Once I go lower, I'll regain consciousness, if point, you will. Like the okay, I'll go along with that. I tell you, well, it's really shaking. Uh, something about having Pete Conrad on a mission makes everybody into comedians. <laughs> I don't know. That's capsule communicator Don Lynn talking interchangeably with uh, Pete Conrad and Al Bean. We're at uh, 92 hours and uh, 10 minutes now to the flight, and Apollo 12 uh, presently shows an altitude of 65.4 nautical miles above the moon. Nope. It's uh, at yeah. its point of Apollon at this time.
Well, it was a short trip anyway, so going past the speed of sound and really high doesn't really matter. Might as well enjoy the mirage. It's Apollo Control Houston at uh, 92 hours uh, 15 minutes down to the flight. Uh, for the past few minutes, uh, we've had no contact with Apollo 12. Uh, we uh, do expect uh, Capcom Don Lind uh, to call them uh, perhaps uh, one or two more times uh, before they bed down for the evening. Their rest period uh, is scheduled to start on uh, this revolution around the moon. Presently, we show an apolloon of uh, 65.5 nautical miles and a paralloon of 54.7 ah, nautical uh, miles. We're getting subsonic lift here. At uh, 92 hours 16 minutes. We just uh, broke below the speed of sound. Houston. Be careful not to force it down suddenly. Okay, and that's Pete okay. Conrad who got Very the good. blisters Don't from the here. medical contacts that send up the medical data, send down, whatever. Send the medical data back to mission control. And he continues to have problems with those. Not sure what was up with the skin irritation thing. I'm still at 30,000 feet. The city in front of us is Dijon. I'm tempted to say famous for its mustard. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe. I don't know. That last report uh, Must be, right? from the spacecraft uh, was Pete Conrad. We're at uh, 92 hours uh, 26 minutes uh, into the flight at this time. I don't want to break past the speed of sound again. Oh, so a lot of planes don't like more than 450 Apollo indicated control, Houston, airspeed. Hours, uh, 38 minutes, uh, now to the flight of Apollo Still 12. not recovering here? We've uh, had no communications uh, with the Apollo 12 crew for the past several minutes. Uh, so there's Dijon? Who is uh, preparing to uh, start their rest period. We presently show uh, Apollo 12 traveling at a velocity of uh, 5,349 feet per second. Current altitude, uh, 59.6 nautical miles. Uh, its orbital parameters, uh, 65.5 nautical miles for an apolloon and uh, 54.7 nautical miles for a paralloon. I don't know why the so at, uh, shadows have been so crappy. 92 hours, uh, 38 minutes, uh, continuing to monitor. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. So now we're following the road to Lyon, and you can sort of see it down there. Highway to our left. And also this uh, sort of valley of fields. It's Apollo Control, Houston, at uh, 92 hours, uh, 50 minutes. Since lift well, off. I guess I'll have to go even lower, which makes we, sense. Uh, which makes sense. Do not plan to make a call to the spacecraft uh, from this point on, uh, and will only respond, of course, if they do call uh, the mission control center. We're some uh, 20 minutes away from uh, loss of signal. We will continue to monitor. Uh, any conversation uh, should a conversation develop between the ground and the spacecraft. Yep. 
it is too fast. The, uh, Apollo 12 has an altitude of uh, 56.5 nautical miles above the lunar surface. This is Apollo Control Houston. This does have air brakes, but probably they too have limits. This is Apollo Control Houston uh, at uh, 93 hours, uh, five minutes down to the flight. Uh, we're less than five minutes away at uh, this time from scheduled loss of signal. Oops, the uh, Mission Control Center has not been uh, contacted uh, by Apollo 12 that, uh, since our last report, uh, nor do we expect to be, presumably uh, the Apollo 12 crew has uh, started uh, their rest period, which will be their last uh, period of rest uh, prior to the start of the. Uh, All right, uh, I need to use the air brakes. Phase I'm not going to get to a breathable level at this rate. We're at uh, 93 hours and six minutes, and currently show Apollo 12 at uh, 54.9 nautical miles above the lunar surface, and this is Apollo Control Houston. Apollo Control Houston, uh, we're less than a minute away now from uh, scheduled loss of signal as Apollo 12 uh, will be passing above the far side of the moon. We're now at uh, 93 hours, uh, nine minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control Houston. Apollo Control Houston, uh, we've uh, had loss of signal with Apollo 12. Uh, we're now at uh, 93 hours, uh, 10 minutes into the flight. Okay, getting consciousness back in here. Good thing they don't prevent me from controlling this the thing. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, we're now at uh, 93 hours, uh, 56 minutes into the flight of Apollo 12. We uh, should be acquiring Apollo 12 uh, momentarily. However, uh, since the crew uh, should have started their rest cycle, we're uncertain at uh, this point as to whether or not we'll have any communications uh, with them on this, the uh, front side pass of the sixth revolution around the moon. However, we will leave uh, the line up in any case. We uh, currently show uh, orbital parameters of uh, 65.2 nautical miles and 55.1 nautical miles. At uh, 93 hours, uh, 57 minutes into the flight, uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. We're more than halfway there. I suppose if we're going to be forced to go low, we might as well this is Apollo uh, Control Enjoy Houston. Enjoy the view. Uh, we are receiving data at this time uh, from the spacecraft. We're at uh, 93 hours, uh, 58 minutes into the flight. Well, my main concern right now is uh, just stopping. <laughs> You saw it out of difficulty taking off. It occurs to me that I'd probably benefit from just this using up a lot more Houston fuel. At, uh, 94 hours, 19 Got the fuel minutes, gauge uh, no down the there. Uh, we've uh, had no uh, conversation with the Apollo 12 Maybe crew, all right. uh, since we acquired them. We've uh, still got uh, 49 minutes uh, of acquisition time on this front side pass. Uh, it's uh, quite conjectural at this point as to whether or not we will have any contact with them. The Apollo 12 crew is uh, presently in uh, their period of rest. 
We now show uh, a velocity uh, for Apollo 12 as it circles the moon of uh, 5,327 feet per second. It's Apolloon uh, now 65.2 nautical miles. It's Paralloon now uh, 55 nautical miles. At uh, 94 hours, uh, 20 minutes, continuing to monitor, uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. I sort of feel bad for the PAOs who had to do the night shift. Incidentally, the orbital period for uh, the Apollo missions was about uh, two hours, basically an hour and 58 minutes or so. And uh, the blackout period, though, the period where they couldn't communicate with Earth is less than one hour, even though one hour would be half of that. Um, and that's because it's more of a cone shaped than shape than a than just half the moon. The, it's not the full hemisphere. There are angles thanks to help uh, satellites helping out. Though normally when they acquire and try and feed through some other location or satellite, it's very difficult. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 94 hours, uh, 38 minutes uh, now into the flight of Apollo 12. We uh, have uh, approximately uh, 31 uh, more minutes of acquisition uh, time on this front side pass of the sixth revolution around the moon. Thus far, we've had no uh, communications contact with the crew uh, presently in their uh, rest cycle. Following uh, this shift change, uh, we will have a change of shift briefing in the news center uh, with uh, Flight Director Pete Frank. Uh, we expect that to start at approximately 9.30. We're now 94 hours, uh, 38 minutes into the flight, and uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. This city is Macon, uh, M-A-C-O-N, and no funny little thing on the C, so it's not Mason. Macon, I think. Maybe. Pronunciation of French. Uh, it's a hit or miss sort of thing. Incidentally, I, I have the throttle all the way at idle. This is why I have a, some worry about actually stopping this thing. And see where the throttle is. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 94 hours uh, 56 minutes uh, into the flight to Apollo 12. We presently show the Apollo 12 uh, velocity at uh, 5,370 feet per second. It's Apolloon uh, 64.8 nautical miles. It's uh, Paralloon uh, 55.1 nautical miles. We have uh, 11 minutes of time remaining before we lose signal with the, the spacecraft. As you have no doubt surmised by this time, uh, we have not contacted the crew uh, at all uh, during this pass. Uh, they're in a rest period. They have. Uh, not attempted to contact Mission Control Center uh, from the spacecraft. We are, uh, as, as a reminder, we are scheduled to have a uh, change of shift news conference uh, scheduled to start at 9.30 uh, this morning or uh, shortly thereafter. We're at 94 hours uh, 58 minutes into the flight and this is Apollo Control Houston. So this is Bellevue, this town we're passing over, and we are coming close to Lyon now. The highway we've been following down is the A6. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, we're at 95 hours, five minutes now into the flight. Uh, some uh, three minutes uh, remaining of acquisition time on this pass. 
Meanwhile, in uh, Mission Control Center Houston, uh, we are undergoing a shift change. Uh, Glenn Lunny's team of black uh, flight controllers are presently on the scene and uh, replacing uh, the uh, Pete Frank team of orange flight controllers. So at uh, 95 hours, uh, five minutes into the flight, uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. The city up ahead is Lyon. I don't know any sites in Lyon, so... It is a very convenient hop to Geneva, though, and that will be the next flight. A very short one, too. But um, then we're going to do a scenic route through the Alps. You can see the foothills of the Alps from here. Well, I'll need some breaks here. Even if I can't point this out sights, people might be able to We've recognize something. Of signal now as the uh, spacecraft goes behind the moon. Uh, we're currently reading an altitude of 55.2 nautical miles. The uh, spacecraft weight in orbit, 70,943 pounds. At uh, 95 hours, 9 minutes into the flight, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Oh, there's an interesting looking building right there. I don't know what it is, though. This is Apollo Control at 95 hours, 24 minutes. Uh, we're now 29 minutes, 43 seconds from reacquiring Apollo 12. The spacecraft at that time will be uh, on its uh, seventh revolution. We're scheduled to start the change of ship press conference momentarily in the small briefing auditorium in the Houston News Center. That press conference is scheduled to begin at this time. At 95 hours, 25 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Okay, well, this is Lyon. Obviously not quite the custom buildings that we saw in Paris. But well populated, anyway. This is Apollo Control at 95 hours, 53 minutes. We're now one, one minute from reacquiring the spacecraft on the seventh revolution. In Mission Control, uh, Flight Director Glenn Lunny's black team of flight controllers have settled down to watching the spacecraft systems during this scheduled eight and a half hour sleep period. We last heard from the crew at 93 hours into the mission, about uh, three hours ago. We show an orbital period now of 60, or rather of uh, 1 hour 58 minutes 47 seconds. Our current orbital parameters are 65 nautical miles by 55.1 nautical miles. At 11 o'clock this morning, there's a briefing scheduled on the Apollo Lunar Surface Experiment Package. That will be held in the main auditorium, the large auditorium of Building 1 in the Houston News Center. That's 11 a.m. this morning for the briefing on the Apollo Lunar Surface Experiment Package. Well, I'll come back around one more time. We'll continue to leave the air-to-ground circuits up live for any possible conversation with the spacecraft, although we don't anticipate any. Uh, we're reading a cabin temperature in the spacecraft uh, right now of 65 degrees. Cabin pressure is uh, holding steady at uh, the nominal 5 pounds per square inch. At 95 hours, 55 minutes, this is Apollo Control standing by.
The runway is a north-south runway. Controller reports that we have data from the spacecraft. It's uh, right here, LFLL. -L -L. 1735, we'll be going in 17, hopefully. This is Apollo Control at 96 hours, 37 minutes. All continues quiet as the crew moves into their sleep period at about uh, three and a half hours now. Uh, the spacecraft is currently moving toward the uh, Site 7, the point at which uh, Apollo 12 uh, is targeted to land. And at the present time, we show uh, an altitude of 59.1 nautical miles above the lunar surface. The ALSEP Apollo Lunar Surface Experiment pack Package Briefing is scheduled to begin at 11 a.m. in the News Center Auditorium, the main auditorium of the Houston News Center. That will be 11 a.m. this morning for the Apollo Lunar Surface Experiment Package Briefing. At 96 hours, 38 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Okay, so airing for a landing. So I should be in here. Let's verify something. Yeah, okay. This is Apollo Control at 97 hours, 3 minutes. We're now uh, some 4 minutes from loss of signal of Apollo 12 spacecraft currently on the seventh revolution of the moon. The crew is uh, some four hours now into a scheduled eight and a half hour sleep period. Here in Mission Control, uh, we have received word from the Solar Particle Alert Network uh, that they have solar particle a alert solar network. Solar flare. Uh, this apparently is the same solar flare that uh, we watched on the 2nd of November. The flare has now rotated around and is coming back into uh, the field of view. Uh, based on the previous information that we had from this flare, uh, we would not expect it to be a problem. Uh, the particle event associated with it uh, were quite low, and uh, from our previous uh, information, uh, we would not expect to get a significant level of radiation to the crew. We will, however, be monitoring the uh, uh, particles coming from the flare uh, over the next few hours, uh, determining the types of radiation levels we can expect both inside the spacecraft uh, and outside the spacecraft, uh, and evaluating this in terms of uh, any possible impact on the mission. Uh, to repeat the, the classification that we have of the flare at this time based on uh, optical data, is that it is a moderate flare, and uh, we would not expect it to be a problem. At uh, 97 hours, four minutes okay, into the mission, landing this gear is down. Apollo Control. Just want to get the plane set up earlier rather than later. Let's see how much slowing down I need to do. A turning. This is Apollo Control at 97 hours, 11 minutes. We've had loss of signal now. Uh, the spacecraft orbit is currently reading 64.8 by 55.3. Uh, we'll reacquire in 42 minutes. Uh, we would expect the crew to continue in their sleep period. Well, we don't expect to have any conversation from them until the scheduled eight and a half hour rest period. Okay, I see the runways concluded. there. At 97 hours, 11 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. I'm already at idle. Again, no flaps. Oh, I'm going past. 
And air breaks out. Uh, let me trim a bit. Uh, I want to shift my... Whoa, that's too high. That's too high. Back down. Oh, God. All right, that's better. This is Apollo Control at 97 hours, 52 minutes. We are about one minute now from reacquiring Apollo 12 spacecraft on its eighth revolution of the moon. And the crew are now some five hours into their uh, scheduled eight and a half hour slow. rest period. Uh, we will continue to leave the circuit open uh, should we receive any calls from the crew, although uh, we do not anticipate uh, hearing from them during the uh, rest period. Apollo 12's it's current a bit orbit wobbly. is uh, 64.7 by 55.6. We show an altitude at this time of 64.1 nautical miles. We're standing by now for reacquisition in about 15 seconds. Okay. Brakes. Looking good, looking good. Ah, I'm using full rudder though. Phew, okay. Delta wings. All right. Looks like we're here. Uh, maybe a little bit more brakes as we turn. I can't turn. I can't, I can't turn. I'm trying to turn. Okay, that's a bit of a wrinkle. And our network controller reports that we have acquisition of signal now. Uh, well, you can sort of see from my rudder that I'm trying to turn. See? No, I don't know. Maybe if I apply the... No. Nope. This one does not want to turn. I mean, presumably if I go fast enough, the rudder would actually be effective. But I think I'm just going to park it off to the side. Oh, this is not good. Alright, I'm just going to I'm just gonna stop it here. <laughs> uh, we seem to be firing uh, a little more RCS. There seems to be a little more RCS thruster activity uh, around the moon that we are Well, here we are at Lyon. I'm gonna wait for Albine's question here. Okay, so Albin reporting in with a question on their thruster firing, which is important because they don't actually have a propellant quantity display that's working right now. And also asking about stuffiness in preparation for the lunar landing. Of course, he will be one of those landing on the moon. Um, so pretty significant. And then on the other side, uh, Pete Conrad has uh, itchiness or blisters from the from the contacts on the, uh, on the medical thing with jigs, so yeah, they're they're uh, having a few issues here and there, so we'll leave it at that and uh, we'll pick up the answer to those questions in the next flight, which will be another quick one, uh, a Dualteen five twenty, another French plane, uh, going from Lyon to Geneva, and so look forward to that. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.